Hello, dear student. Welcome to another lecture in Dynamics of Rigid Bodies. This is Lecture 3 in Dynamics of Rigid Bodies. So far, we have learned about moment of inertia and the theorems of moment of inertia. In this video, we will learn about moment of inertia of regular sheets. Particularly, we will learn about the moment of inertia of rectangular lamina, of uniform rectangular bar, and also a circular disc. A rectangular lamina. Consider a rectangular lamina of mass density rho. We will try to find its moment of inertia about an axis perpendicular to its plane and passing through its center of mass using the perpendicular axis theorem. For that, consider two perpendicular axes x and y. The length and the breadth of the lamina uh, let it be L and B. Since rho is the mass density of the lamina, let the total mass of the lamina, complete lamina, will be equal to m into L into rho. That is, area of the lamina, the total area of the lamina into the mass density. Now consider a small rectangular piece at a distance x from any axis, let it be from y. Let uh, consider this small uh, rectangular piece at the distance x from the axis y, which has a width of length dx. If rho is again the mass density of this rectangular piece, then the total mass of this rectangular piece will be the mass density times the area of this piece. And the area of this rectangular piece here is the length B into the width dx. Therefore, the small mass of this rectangular piece will be B into dx. That is the area of the rectangular piece into the mass density rho. Now, let us find the moment of inertia of this rectangular lamina. The moment of inertia is found about an axis which is passing perpendicular to this rectangular lamina and it is passing through the center of mass of the rectangular lamina. Again, to find the moment of inertia about this axis, we can consider, uh, we can find it using the perpendicular axis theorem. What does the perpendicular axis theorem tells us? The perpendicular axis theorem tells us that the moment of inertia about any axis which is passing perpendicular through a mass, uh, uh, through a body about its center of mass will be equal to the moment of inertia, the sum of moment of inertia through any per two perpendicular axes which is perpendicular to this axis. Therefore, moment of inertia about this axis will be equal to sum of moment of inertia about y axis and that of x axis according to perpendicular axis theorem. Now, the moment of inertia of this small strip about the axis y will be the mass into the distance square. We know that moment of inertia is calculated as mass times distance square. Here, x is the distance of that body. x is the distance uh, from of this uh, strip from the y-axis. Therefore, it is the dm, the small mass dm into x squared. And that is the small moment of inertia, the moment of inertia of only this strip. That is why the small moment of inertia about this axis. Therefore, the, uh, to calculate the moment of inertia of the entire lamina, 
we can integrate it from this point to this point. Hope you understand. We can integrate to find the complete moment of inertia about the axis y. We can integrate this small moment of inertia from us, uh, its starting point to its ending point. So, if this axis is considered to be y is equal to 0 and the total length is considered as L, then this will be at minus L by 2 and this will be at plus L by 2. I repeat, if I consider this axis as y is equal to 0 and the total length of this lamina is L, we have already seen it. Therefore, this length will be half that will be at minus L by 2 and this point will be at plus L by 2. Therefore, I can integrate this small mass from minus L by 2 to plus L by 2 to find the moment of inertia of this entire lamina about this axis y. This is when the lamina will rotate in this fashion about y. This is what we are going to find. Therefore, I am going to integrate it from minus L by 2 to plus L by 2. And we have already seen the small mass is again rho into the width into the small dx. That is uh, the width. Uh, the length of the lamina is here b and the small width is dx. We have already seen that. Uh, so, the area of the lamina into its mass density will give the small dm. Here, b into rho into dx will give the small dm and the x square can be easily placed over here. Since this body is a regular body, Instead of integrating from minus L by 2 to L by 2, I can just integrate the mass uh, moment of inertia about this area only, about a half area and multiply it by 2. Since it's a regular body, I can do that. Therefore, I take 2 out and say I integrate it from 0 to L by 2. So, total moment of inertia about the axis y now is 2 times the moment of inertia of this part. On integrating, I know that x square uh, on integrating with dx will become x cube by 3. So, here, here I know that this x will become x cube divided by 3 on integrating where this x x cube will be from 0 to L by 2. Therefore, x in upper level, upper uh, limit is L by 2. So, this will become L by 2 the whole cube minus the lower limit that is 0 the whole cube divided by 3. Therefore, my answer will be 2 into b into rho. That guys will come over and integral 0 to L by 2 x square dx will become L by 2 the whole cube uh, divided by 3. Now, what is 2 cube? It is 8. 2 cube is 8. So, I can multiply this 8 by 3. This 8 comes to the denominator. 8 into 3 is 24. I already have a 2 here. So, what I do is I already have a 2 here. And my denominator will be 8 into 3. So, what I can do? I can just cut it off and make it 4 and my denominator will become 12. So, this is my denominator and all other guys B, P and L cube will be here. Instead of writing L cube, I have separated it as 
L square and L for another purpose. So here my IY had become the total IY had become BLP into L square by 12. But you can see that the B is the width. This is B. We have already seen that B is the width of the lamina. And we also know, know that the length of the lamina. The length of the lamina is given by L. Therefore, the total area of lamina area is equal to B into L. Therefore, the mass, the total mass we have seen that it is equal to the mass density rho into B L. So, look at here. This is the guy we have here. We can replace it by capital M. That is the mass of the entire lamina. Therefore, the moment of inertia about the y-axis will be equal to mass into length square divided by 12. Since we have considered it about uh, the axis y, we are considering the length. The, the length came into the equation because we are considering it about the axis y. Now let's move on. We know that the moment of inertia about the axis y is ml square by 12. Similarly, when we calculate the moment of inertia about the axis x will also be equal to m by 12 into b squared. Here we consider the breadth b because we are considering a moment of inertia about this axis about the x axis according to perpendicular axis theorem we can say that the i that is the moment of inertia about this perpendicular axis will be equal to the sum of moment of inertia about the y axis and that about the x axis therefore on calculating, we can just add these two uh, items together and we can take m by 12 in common and I get the moment of inertia about this z axis or the perpendicular axis is equal to m into L square plus V square by 12. Let me repeat. I already have a moment of inertia about y-axis that is ml square by 12. Now I will also find the moment of inertia about the x-axis using the same methods and I will get an answer will be equal to mb squared by 12. According to perpendicular axis theorem, I know that the moment of inertia about this axis will be equal to the moment of inertia about two other perpendicular axes that in this case is IAY and IX. So I just add these two moment of inertia. Here I get M by 12 in common and my moment of inertia of about this axis, moment of inertia of this rectangular lamina, entire rectangular lamina about this Z axis will be equal to m by 12 into L squared plus B squared. Now let us find the moment of inertia of a uniform bar or a uniform rectangular bar. Let this uniform rectangular bar has a length L, a breadth B and a height H. A uniform rectangular bar can be considered as a number of rectangular lamina stacked together. Uh, uh, stacked together in a similar fashion. So, to find the moment of inertia of this rectangular bar about an axis which is passing through its center of mass and perpendicular to this can be equal to the sum, uh, sum of moment of inertia of these rectangular lamina about the same axis. We know that 
We have already found the moment of inertia of the rectangular lamina about an axis perpendicular to it. So in this case we have a number of rectangular laminas stacked together to make a uniform bar. We know that the moment of inertia of one single rectangular lamina about this axis is m into l square plus b square by 12. Here in this case we are considering only small portion of this big rectangular bar. We can uh, give the mass as dm. Therefore the small moment of inertia of only one rectangular lamina about the axis y is the small mass divided by 12 into L square plus B square. We got this equation from our final equation from our last slide what we have learned. We have got it from our last slide. Hope you remember that in our last slide we had I is equal to M by 12 into L square plus B square. This is for just one rectangular lamina. And in this case, we have a number of rectangular laminas. Therefore, only one rectangular lamina, considering one rectangular lamina, we can say that the small moment of inertia which is contributed only by one rectangular lamina will be this. Now, to find the moment of inertia uh, co uh, contributed by all the rectangular laminas, we can just sum all the rectangular laminas. So we sum. It is summation of this small quantity will give us the um, moment of inertia of every rectangular lamina about this axis which will be in turn equal to the moment of inertia of this entire rectangular box. This entire uniform box. Here we know that L square, B square, 12 all are constants. Only one variable is dm. Therefore, the sum of mass of a single rectangular laminas, every single rectangular laminas will definitely be the total mass of this body. Therefore, sum over dm will definitely be m. And we will just carry on these guys into the middle and we will have the moment of inertia of the center of mass, moment of inertia of this uniform bar about an axis passing through its center of mass is m by 12 into L square plus B square. You can find that the moment of inertia of a single rectangular lamina and that of an entire rectangular box is same and that is equal to m by 12 into l squared plus b squared where l is the length and b is the breadth. So now so far we have seen what is the moment of inertia about an axis which is uh, passing through the center of mass of the body. Now let us consider another axis which is passing through any edge of that body. How can we find a moment of inertia of this uh, rectangular box about the axis y dash? Yes, we can find it using the uh, parallel axis theorem. Hope you remember the parallel axis theorem. Uh, according to parallel axis theorem, the moment of inertia of about any axis will be equal to the moment of inertia of that body about its center of mass uh, plus the mass of the body multiplied by the distance between the two axes. This is what we have learned in our last lecture. That is moment of inertia of this body about the axis y uh, sorry about the axis y dash will be equal to the moment of inertia of this body about the axis y plus mass of the body multiplied by distance between these two axes. Now what is the distance a between these two axes? 
we can find that just uh, drop a perpendicular over here. Here we have a right angled triangle. The length of this right angled triangle, this uh, altitude length is just a half of this length that is B by 2. Again, base length is half of this length that is L by 2. Therefore, the uh, according to hypotenuse theorem, the Pythagoras theorem, if this is the length A, then according to Pythagoras theorem, A squared will be equal to the uh, base squared. Hypotenuse squared is equal to base squared plus altitude squared. Though, uh, the hypotenuse square a, squ a square will be equal to the base square. Base is here L by 2 plus the height. Height, the altitude. Here the length of the altitude is B by 2. Therefore, A square will be equal to L by 2 square plus B by 2 square. So, what will we get? A square is equal to 2 square will give you 4. And here also you will have a 4. So, it will be L square plus B square by 4. So, the answer here will be if I take A, the square root of the entire system, then the square root of 4 is 2. I have 1 by 2. And I can write L square plus B square root over L square plus B square. And this is the length of this line. The uh, distance between the axis Y and Y dash. Therefore, I can write that I is equal to, I already know the moment of inertia about the center of mass. I already found the moment of inertia about the axis Y as M by 12 into L square plus B square. And what I need is M into A square. I already have my A square here. So I will just substitute the value for my A square to this and I will get m into l square plus b square on substituting for a square what i will get what i will get is m into instead of a square i can write it as l square plus b square by 4 so i can take m as a common factor outside and i can write it as l square plus b square by 12 plus this quantity that is L square plus B square by 4. On taking the LCM, to make the denominator same what I will do, I will multiply it by 3 so that my denominator here it will become 4 into 3, 12. So on multiplying with 3, I should multiply this quantity with 3 and also this quantity with 3. What will it give me? I have L square plus 3 L square. What will be it? 4 into L square. Again, I have B square plus 3B square. I will get 4 into B square divided by my common denominator that is 12. On taking 4 as common, I can just cut it off. I can take 4 as a common factor and write L square plus B square by 12. I can just take it. Uh, out so I can just cut it I know that 4 uh, into 3 is 12 so my denominator will be 3 therefore my answer here will be I is equal to the mass which I have taken out and it will become L square plus B square by 3 what do you understand from it you can see that the moment of inertia about the center of mass was m into l square plus b square by 12 and that of moment of inertia about 
an axis which is passing through its corner is mass into L squared plus B squared by 3. What does this tell us? This tells us that the moment of inertia will be the lowest when the axis is passing through the center of mass and as the axis is moving away from the center of mass, its moment of inertia increases. Therefore, the body will show the highest resistance uh, for rotation about this y dash axis and the lowest resistance for the rotation about the y axis. Now, let us learn the moment of inertia of a thin circular disc. Consider a circular disc of mass rho of radius r. Now, the mass of the circular disc will be rho into pi r square. Pi r square is, a radi uh, is the area of this circle. Area of a circle whose radius is r is pi r square. Therefore, total mass will be area into the mass density. Therefore, m will be equal to rho into pi r square. From this, I can write an equation for the mass density rho as m divided by pi into r square just by rearranging this. Now, let us consider a small strip, a small strip here which is uh, mean marked here. This is at a distance x and this has a thickness dx. Now the mass of this small strip will be area of this small strip area of this small strip into the mass density. We already have an equation for mass density. So, the area of this small strip, what is the area of this small strip? What will be its area? This will be the circumference of this circle multiplied by its thickness. We know that it is at a distance x. So, the circumference of a circle whose radius is x is 2 pi into x. And this is the circumference of this circle. The circumference of this circle multiplied by this thickness dx will give you the area of this uh, shaded portion. Therefore, the mass will be equal to area into the mass density. So, we have here 2 pi x which is circumference, dx which is the thickness and rho which is the mass density. Therefore, the mass of the strip is 2 pi x rho into dx. Now, to find the moment of inertia about the center of mass, let's consider an axis which is passing perpendicular to the disk about its center of mass. Now, the moment of inertia of this small strip, of this small strip about this axis will be again equal to mass of this strip multiplied by the distance. As the moment of inertia tells us, I is equal to mass into its distance. Therefore, mass of this small strip multiplied by its distance. So, we have that the mass of this strip can be considered as a small mass dm into x square. We already know that the dm is equal to the mass density into the area. Mass density into area of that small strip. We have already found it as mass density rho into area of the strip that is 2 pi x its circumference into dx which is the length uh, which is the uh, breadth of that shaded portion. Therefore, I can multiply this x square with this x and write it at x cube. I have my 2x. 2x will come over here. I have my rho here. dx over here. I will multiply my x with uh, this x square and I will get an x cube. So, how can we calculate this? 
we can calculate this as these all small uh, uh, constants that is 2 pi and rho will come out of the integral and I can integrate from 0 to r. What is 0? This point is 0 to r. Uh, we have a circle at a distance x. We need to find uh, the mo total moment of inertia. So, it will be when the x is 0 to x is equal to r. These whole area will be covered. If x is just small, then we will, cons we will have a strip over here. If x is little more higher, then we will have a strip over here. So, we can uh, calculate it from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to r. And here I can write x cube. That is the only variable with respect to dx. How can I calculate this? x cube with respect to dx on integrating. What should I get? 2 pi rho into x cube will give me x to the power 4 by 4. Right? And this over the limit 0 to r. On giving the upper limit, this will give me 2 pi rho into on giving the upper limit. Upper limit is r. r to the power 4 plus the lower limit is 0. Nothing going to change. Divided by 4. So, can I cancel this out? Can I cancel this out and write it as 2? So, here my answer will become pi rho into r to the power 4 divided by 2. This is the answer for my integration. So here, look over here. I have my pi here. I have my rho over here. Instead of writing r to the power 4, I have just split it into r square into r square for my other purposes. So I can write it as rho pi r square into r square by 2. We know that the pi r square is the area. It is the area of this entire circle. Pi r square is the area of the entire circle and rho is the mass density. So, this total quantity will give us the total mass. That is, total area into mass density will give us the total mass. Therefore, it can be written as I is equal to m r squared by 2. Now, let us consider the moment of inertia of the same disc about its diameter. So, the diameter is a line which is passing through, cutting through the entire circle and which is passing through the center of the circle. So, what we need to find is the moment of inertia about its diameter. So, now here the circle will be rotating in this fashion. Okay. Now, uh, now we will uh, calculate this using our perpendicular axis theorem. We'll see how. Consider another diameter which is perpendicular to the existing diameter. Now, according to perpendicular axis theorem, the moment of inertia about this axis will be equal to the sum of moment of inertia of other two perpendicular axes. In this case, this other two perpendicular axes are these two diagonals. So, we know that the moment of inertia of the center of mass will be equal to Ix plus Iy. But in this case, since Ix and Iy are calculated on a regular body, the circular a circle is a regular body. So, in this case, Ix and Iy are equal to each other and let me call it as Id that is moment of inertia about any diameter. Therefore, we know that the ICM we have already calculated the moment of inertia about the center of mass as mr squared by 2 and this Ix plus Iy I can write it as Id plus Id which will give me 2 Id. On rearranging, I can just bring my 2 over here. So, my answer will become mr squared by 4. Therefore, 
moment of inertia of this circular disc about its diameter is mr squared by 4 which one is greater mr squared by 2 or mr squared by 4 yes mr squared by 2 is the greater quantity what does it tells us it tells us the resistance offered by this body to rotate about this axis the perpendicular axis is higher than the resistance offered by this body to rotate about any axis uh, during this path any axis about its diagonal hope you are clear with this so dear student so far we have learnt about the moment of inertia of two of uh, three rigid bodies that are the rectangular lamina uh, the uniform bar and also the moment of inertia of a disc we will learn about moment of inertia of some more regular bodies and will have fun with learning rigid body of dynamics see you in the next video thank you